Now, SMEs have been identified globally as the key drivers of creating wealth, reducing poverty and facilitating jobs in South Africa. It's reported that SMEs contribute 40% to GDP and 60% of the workforce in formal employment. Business Partners Limited has launched a fund aimed at financing high-impact entrepreneurs. And joining us for more on this is Nazim Martin. He's MD of Business Partners Limited. Thanks so much, Nazim, for joining us uh, this afternoon. Let's perhaps right at the top start off with the definition of what actually constitutes a high-impact entrepreneur. Like all definitions, uh, uh, in fact, let me start again. Alicia, thank you very much for having me. Uh, like all definitions, they can be stretched to, meet, to mean all things to all people. From our perspective, w we're looking at the types of businesses that we are going to be required to take much more risk than we had taken in the past, where we have the possibility of getting a better return than, th than we have in the past, and where the development impact of those business is significantly higher than the businesses we have financed in the past. Effectively, we're talking about businesses or business concepts or products or ideas which are established in a particular place, which have legs and which have the growth potential to move significantly beyond that location into South Africa as well and possibly even internationally. So we're looking for businesses with high growth potential but also with high job creation potential. Nazim, it's Lindsay in Cape Town. You say there is very little support and limited access to finance for small and medium entrepreneurs. And that's been a criticism which has been levelled at the South African banking system uh, for so long, even before the National Credit Act and everybody uh, clam clammed up. Where do you sit in between? W I mean, where do you sit with the banks and where do you get the money for the fund from? Sorry, it's, it's such a simple question, but it, it needs to be cleared up, I think. It's not so simple. I, I think we were established more than 31 years ago. Uh, to, with a specific aim to have a development impact, in other words, to make funding or risk funding accessible to small and medium business entrepreneurs. At the same time, our founding fathers wanted us to have a development impact. So we have this twin cell. Where does that place us vis-a-vis -vis the banks? It's simple. Banks or traditional lenders usually have two important criteria they look at. One, if you were the entrepreneur and you approach the bank with, for finance, usually, they would look at the extent of owner's equity, of own capital that you have, have available. In these days, in this day and age, more or less 40 to 60 percent of the money they require you to have and put on the table. If they find it in their hearts to lend you the balance, then you have to provide them with collateral which covers their money at least one time. At Business Partners, we adopt a different approach. We look at the viability of the business, the cash flow vi viability, in other words, based on the reasonable assumptions of, of, of a revenue and expenses going into the future, does this business veer towards being cash flow positive? We assess in detail, in great detail, the entrepreneur from every dimension. Uh, we look to do a fair deal. The extent of the amount of our funding that's at risk determines the pricing of our funding. We don't place an overtly great emphasis on collateral or owner's equity. For us, it's key. Viability is key. Entrepreneurial qualities is key. Having a, a financial management system in place to receive our money account for every single cent of revenue and expenditure, and by the next month, give us a set of financials, which is our dipstick towards determining whether this business is on track or not, and the extent to which we should provide handholding technical assistance and yeah. consulting services. That's exactly what I wanted to ask you. You know, assessing viability of a business is one thing at the start, but then where you've got, uh, you know, a fact like there's a failure rate of 80% of businesses within the first two years of starting a business cropping up, you've got to ask the question, just how much hand-holding do you have to do? From our perspective, we do a lot of hand-holding. In, in fact, we are, based on our track record and our history, we are quite convinced that if all you do is provide an SME, a small business, with finance, then on the day on which you, uh, you, you write out the check, make another entry into, bo into your books, provision for bad debt. It's going to happen. So out of enlightened self-interest, both to help grow the business and also to protect our own interests, we play a very active role in the, in the, in the businesses in which we invest. Uh, we, we, we have regular meetings of shareholders Often we are a shareholder, or even if we are not a shareholder, uh, and there are that, that often also happens because many small businesses don't want an institutional investor. We have designed specific financial solutions where we are rewarded as though we were a shareholder, but we're not a shareholder. So, so we play an active role, certainly with respect to every dimension. When we conduct our initial due diligence, we try and determine where the potential shortcomings or the challenges for this business, uh, business may be. For example, w w it might be a really great entrepreneur, but he or she doesn't have 
wonderful marketing skills. We may ourselves or find a, an expert in marketing who will work with the entrepreneur, develop a marketing strategy and plan, probably even execute it with the entrepreneur okay. with the intention of transferring that skills over time or certainly staffing it up within yeah. the entrepreneurial business. So from our perspective, handholding is an integral part of, the of, of, the, of, of offering which incorporates risk finance plus the handholding or technical assistance.